Hello fellow gamers, I am your host Brent Justice and welcome to the FPS.com's YouTube channel. In today's video I'm going to go over some graphics settings and show you how to run the benchmark in the game Ghost Recon Breakpoint. This game just had a recent update. It has had title update 2.0.0, which has added Vulcan API support in the game. This is brand new. It now supports both the DirectX 11 and the Vulcan API. We have a full written performance review on our website at the FPSReview.com that goes over DirectX 11 versus Vulcan performance in this game. It fully covers the performance of both APIs on 11 video cards, even including performance comparison on AMD's Fidelity FX, which is supported in this game. Please check out that full review to see the performance differences that the new API makes in this game. But today I'm going to show you how to run the benchmark. This video will go hand in hand with the review itself. First, this is the main screen you come to when you start the game, so you press spacebar to continue and we'll be dropped into the main menu once it loads up here. We're doing this real time so you see everything and how it's all how it's all done. The first thing you'll want to click is options and then you want to click settings. From here, you want to go to this tab right here, which looks like a little uh, display. This is your graphics settings, basically. Now, this is a little confusing when you're at this menu. You can change your game settings here, like your resolution and all your graphics settings. However, these settings won't affect the benchmark settings. These settings affect the actual game settings in the game that you would play. So this is where you would change your resolution and graphics settings if you want to play the game. But if you want to run the benchmark, what you actually do first before even changing these settings is go ahead and click on run benchmark. Yes, it's a little confusing. You would think that clicking this means the benchmark is going to run when you click this. It's actually not. What it's going to do is load another menu. It's basically loading into the benchmark application within the game so it's a menu within a menu it's a little confusing because it says run benchmark but as you can see now we're in the benchmark system and you see the exact same graphics settings options that you saw before this is where you change the graphics options for the benchmark if you want to run it and it will tell you which api you are in as you can see we are in the vulcan api benchmark vulcan if you're in DirectX 11, it will say Benchmark DX 11. That way you know which API you're in when you're running the benchmark. Now from here are your basic settings. You have the window mode, full screen, or, or um, window mode. The resolution, obviously, that's going to be very important. It's going to determine your performance, how the game looks, and so forth. When you set the resolution, you do not need to restart the game. You can set the resolution and then run the benchmark and be okay with that. But if you're going to change any of the graphics settings here below, these are the ones that you will want to restart the entire game before you run the benchmark again. Because those do need a game restart. So first thing we come to is VSync. If you're doing benchmarking, you obviously want to keep VSync turned off. Also, make sure VSync is turned off or set on application settings in your driver settings. Because if VSync is forced on there, well, then you're going to be locked at 60 FPS. Refresh rate, obviously, set that to your display, your native display refresh rate. Resolution scaling, this lets you actually increase the game's uh, rendering resolution beyond 100%. 100% is the resolution that's being displayed here in resolution. Uh, this, just be careful with this setting. This eats up video RAM capacity and of course will degrade performance. It'll look a lot better, but it will eat up performance and VRAM very quickly. But the option is there, so that's quite nice. We do have uh, an HDR option in the game, so if your uh, monitor supports high dynamic resolution, you can turn HDR on and 
have that and also FreeSync. If you have FreeSync support, this game does support FreeSync 2 and FreeSync 2 HDR. So all that's there if your monitor supports it, just set that accordingly. Temporal injection, that's going to improve your anti-aliasing quality so you can leave that on. It's a really performance free option so you can leave that on and of course anti-aliasing itself to get anti-aliasing you can turn leave, just leave that on it's all a shader based post-processing method and it's very fast and uh, it does not cost a lot of performance but it does make the game look better uh, you do have a frame lock you can limit the frame rate in the game I mean if you're actually you know playing the game that might be important to you but for a benchmark you want to keep that off and also the background frame lock, you want to keep that off as well. But it's interesting, you can you can change both the foreground and background frame, frame lock in the game. Um, the next interesting thing we want to come to is uh, sharpening. This game supports AMD's Fidelity FX sharpening. You can turn that on, leave it on, or turn it off. This will improve the texture quality in the game. And especially when TXAA, or the shader-based AA method that this game uses, is being used, this improves the texture quality with that enabled. And it's a performance-free cost. We tested the performance of this in our full article, so you can read it to see what that is. So you can just leave this option on and enjoy the better image quality. But if you're writing a benchmark like we are here, you can turn it off or on and see how that affects your performance. You can change the intensity of the sharpening, which is very nice. And now we come to the actual graphic settings that will really affect your performance and how much video RAM that the game uses. Now, there are individual settings for each option. You've got ambient occlusion, level of detail, texture quality, screen space shadows, terrain quality, all these things all the way down here to the very bottom. Fog, background blur, volumetric fog, long range shadows. Now you can change these individually and like open up each thing and then select, okay, I want the you know highest setting here and then I want this on and then I want the highest setting here. You know, you can go through and do that manually. But what I suggest doing, and what's the easiest, and especially if you're benchmarking so that other people can replicate your settings, you want to use the preset options. And when you click the preset options, you will see that there is ultimate, which is the highest settings, then there's ultra, then very high, and then high, then medium, and then low. So if we set ultimate, for example, that's what I'm in now, it changes everything to the highest values. I know the uh, menu's a little jittery when you scroll it here. I don't know why it does that. It's a little weird. Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate. This setting is very high. That's the highest setting it supports. So you go through and you know you can double check that everything's at the high, but you see that very high is the highest that setting has anyway. So basically at ultimate, everything's maxed out. That's a maxed out setting. And if you change, let's say, to high, then it's going to change to high settings. And it will change things, even like your anisotropic filtering will lower that to 4x instead of 16x and set things accordingly. And, of course, if you go you know, to low, you're going to have low settings all the way across the board. The preset affects everything. So you have a uh, good amount of options here to benchmark and test. And if you use the preset options here, other people can compare their results with yours in the benchmark. Because you can say, I ran at ultimate settings. And then all they have to do is go to the preset, set ultimate, and run and see what happens. Um, now, the other thing about performance here, and yeah, as I mentioned, when you change your graphic settings to anything else in the preset, apply it'll when i let's say i click medium here see how it says apply i can apply the settings but you will still want to back all the way out of the game exit the game completely and restart it again you will need to do that and it'll even warn you sometimes to do that it is necessary because that changes and sets the proper texture resolution when you change the uh, texture quality setting so you do need to restart the game every time you change a setting here. Don't just change the setting, apply, and run the benchmark. That will not give you an accurate reading at all. So please do not do that. Okay, the next big thing that uh, we need to talk about with the benchmark is the VRAM usage counter down here. Now, I am currently at 4K resolution. 
and I am running on a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, which has 11 gigabytes of RAM. You can see here that the VRAM usage is 9122, or just over 9 gigabytes out of my 11 gigabytes of RAM. This can be exceeded, and when it does, it will light up red. Now, thankfully in this game, you can still enable those graphics settings even if VRAM usage is exceeded. There are other games that just lock you out and don't let you do that, but in this game you can. Now what you'll experience with that is maybe stuttering or choppy performance or low dips every now and then or pauses as you load new scenes and new textures and new models and so forth because if you exceed the video RAM, those issues can occur. So at least in this game you can set that so that you can benchmark those differences. If you bottleneck yourself outside your VRAM usage, you're going to see bottlenecks. But if you lower the graphics settings to a setting where you're in the green and the total VRAM usage is below your total VRAM capacity, then you'll have a smoother experience and your GPU can flex its full potential. If you bottleneck your GPU by putting the memory usage over your video RAM capacity, then you're bottlenecking your GPU and it's not able to flex its full muscle. So be wary of that when you run the benchmark or the, or the game itself. And you can check that by running the benchmark, go ahead and set it over the VRAM limit, see how that performs, and then choose a setting below your VRAM limit and see how that performs. And you're going to see different scaling between DirectX 11 and Vulkan based on that. If you bottleneck the GPU with the VRAM, you're not going to have as much advantage with Vulkan over DirectX 11. But if you let the GPU flex its muscle, then you will. So it just depends how much you're bottlenecking the GPU itself. And of course, this just depends on the video RAM on your graphics card. 8 gigabyte, 6 gigabyte, 4 gigabyte, whatever you have just be wary of that. Ultimate obviously uses the most graphics memory. And as you lower the graphics setting, it uses lower and lower. If I go to ultra, now see it's gonna do 7933. If I lower it down to very high, 7308. Let's see, if I have to, if, if I had to get it to eight gigabyte, yeah, I could actually do uh, what, what was that? Ultra... Very high. Yeah, I would have to go to very high to get it right below 8 gigabytes. So if I had an 8 gigabyte video card at 4K, very high is going to be the setting that would get me below 8 gigabyte. Because even Ultra... Well, Ultra would do it, but it would be really close to 8 gigabyte. It still may be a little bit bottlenecking at Ultra. But definitely putting it at ultimate would put it over an 8 gigabyte video card. And let's say I had a 6 gigabyte video card. I'd have to go to even high. Even high is over 6 gigabyte. I would have to go to medium to get under 6 gigabytes. And now I'm at 4456. If I had to get do a 4 gigabyte video card at 4K, of course, who would do that? Uh, you'd have to go all the way to low to get under 4 gigabyte. So you can see how that affects it. And of course the resolution that you're at also adds into that. So if I were at 1440p or 1080p, those numbers would be different. So just be wary of that when you change your settings because um, it will affect that smoothness of the uh, benchmark or the game and uh, everything else. But anyway, let's run the benchmark. So after you set your settings, you apply them, you restart the game, you're back in this menu, you're ready to go, you hit benchmark. And this is what I love about this benchmark here. Um, it shows a lot of information. Look in the bottom right down here. It shows my CPU, which is a Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core. It shows the video card I'm running, the driver version I'm running. It shows the uh, percentage of utilization by the... Uh, CPU. You can see how each thread is uh, running percentage wise. Look, it even shows the GPU temperature.
Now my uh, my performance is a little low here because I am also screen recording this at 60 FPS at the same time I'm trying to run this benchmark. So my performance here is a lot lower. I tested this before doing this video and I, I was getting much closer to 60 FPS out of this video card at this setting, at this resolution. So my, the performance you're seeing now is simply because I have screen recording software recording 4K resolution at 60 FPS while at the same time it's running a benchmark, the benchmark. But you can see all the information it displays shows your GPU percentage, CPU percentage that it's running at, the FPS. It'll show you the max FPS and the lowest FPS there. And I just really love that it shows the GPU temperature and the uh, CPU percentages for each thread while you're running this. So you can really see what's going on live in the benchmark. And as you can see, um, we've gone through two different scenes in the benchmark. Did the first scene, which was pretty, uh, had, a, had a big battle there. The second one was through a, a, a foggy forest kind of thing. And now we're in this snowy environment. This is the last scene of the benchmark. And yeah, we'll come to the end here. Yeah, my performance really tanked with the recording software turned on. That uh, my 46 right now, I was at an easy 60 FPS right here at this scene. So, yeah, that recording software really dropped performance. But this is the end of the benchmark scene. And it's over. And then we are displayed with all this wonderful information to look at. We have the average FPS, which was 45. The minimum was 33. The max was 56. CPU utilization average was 13%. It shows the minimum, the maximum. The GPU utilization shows the game version, the platform, CPU, RAM, GPU, VRAM, video driver. All that information right there. It gives you a an overall grade letter rating right now it says my total score is B I'm in the green I'm okay um, but it can get worse um, gives you a frame score that's just an arbitrary number I suggest going by the average FPS number instead or the minimum and maximum but that's it that's how you run the benchmark it's really quite simple and should allow everybody to compare their settings very easily in this game and now you kind of understand how that all works so this video goes hand in hand with our full written review of Ghost Recon Breakpoint DirectX 11 versus Vulkan API performance in the game check out our full review on that and see how the performance stacked up on 11 video cards and how much faster Vulkan is over DirectX 11 I think you'll be quite surprised and pleased and that article will let you know which API to run in and which graphics cards we recommend for running this game under the Vulkan API or DirectX 11. That is the benchmark in the game. That's what we use to run our testing and do all our testing with, and that's how we did it. So thank you for watching this video, and stay tuned for the next one.